got here today? Well, let's get this out of the bubble wrap here. And I'm really happy with this seller on eBay. Wrapped everything up super nice. We have an itty bitty, teeny tiny little surprise. And what is this? Well, It is a Connect X3 from Mellanox, 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. Now, funnily enough, I tried to do this video earlier, and I did get an example of this card from eBay that did not work. Now, I already had one, and it's actually installed in my freshly upgraded Windows 11 machine. So, uh, I've got this, okay. Now, we'll bring out the next piece of this puzzle. which is these and like i said i've got two of these cards so i need two of these and what exactly are these well they basically allow us to adapt from the sfp plus um, plug that is in this um, gigabit adapter see we adapt from that which normally uses copper Right, and um, the problem with it is the longest you can go, I think, is 10 meters. And that's just not enough for what I need because I'm going to do a direct connection between my desktop and my file server. And this is the second part of the puzzle. Okay, I got these from a company called um, FS.com. Let me zoom in here. This is supposedly a 850 nanometer laser um, transceiver that will shoot up to 300 meters. Now, I'm not going near that far. Uh, let's see how long my cord is here. Or cable, it's not a cord. I've got me a fiber patch cable and it's much longer than I need. 25 meters. So I don't even need it to be that big. And you can see I also got it at FS.com. I was a little weary of it because I had never heard of FS.com, but um, I'm willing to give it a shot because, I mean, most everything's made in China anyway, and they have a pretty good reputation as best I can tell. So, uh, without further ado, let's go install this card that I just took out of the bubble wrap in my NAS and see if it actually is going to work, unlike the other one that I got from eBay. Okay, so we're in the very messy server room, but that's okay. Because what else is it going to be for? Right, and this is the server. It's not in a rack or anything. Um, this is actually a two processor server. Uh, it has two 10 core processors with 20 threads each, so it's 40 threads. I've yet to make a video about this. This actually replaced the um, Amazon Prime Day server. There's almost none of these parts left. I got enamored with the idea of a dual processor server just because it's super cool. So I built this from a bunch of eBay parts. It was kind of a nightmare. There was some problems. I'll make a video about that soon, hopefully. But um, right now I've just got it connected to a gigabit um, router connection and that's how I transfer stuff between my main desktop and this NAS running Unraid but this is what we're gonna do this is why we're that's the reason we're putting in this 10 gigabit card so I'll go ahead and do that now okay and there's nothing really special to see about that I'm gonna go ahead and ground myself let's go ahead and plug this in and I already put the the fiber transceiver in there and it just snapped in the sfp hole gonna leave that rubber thing because i know with fiber if you let it get any dust in it it either degrades or just doesn't work so let's go ahead and put this thing in i've unplugged the server easy peasy now i'm gonna put the top on it lift the monitor back up here and we'll turn it on 
and I should be able to tell pretty instantly whether or not this is going to work because what it's supposed to do is pull up the Mellanox BIOS for just a little bit and it wasn't doing that with the other one and I put the broken card in the desktop and it did the same thing it basically locked up the boot process so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with what one of these fouled cards will do so let's see let's turn it on here have to plug it back up I'll put the fiber cord in the last thing so I just want to make sure this this actually works um, there we go what I'm hoping to see is the Mellanox BIOS to show up the Intel does at some point but I'm assuming they can both load Hey, Mellanox Flex Boot. So we're good. We are good. All right, so now I just need to add the fiber cord. I don't know what kind of configuration I have to do with Unraid. I've never actually done that, but what I'm going to do is put some static IPs, one on the NAS 10 gigabit card and one on my desktop 10 gigabit card so I can control that they're going to talk to one another. Oh, how exciting this is. And now she quiets down because it's booting into an operating system. Man, you got to love servers. So now we're going to get into the fun part of things, and that's setting everything up. I do know that both 10 gigabit cards work just fine with those FS.com transceiver modules. So that's fantastic. Now let's go through and set this up so that we can get a direct connection between the NAS and this desktop computer. So I'm going to right click and go to settings. And then we need to go to network and internet. And right now you're seeing ethernet and it's showing connected, but that's just the regular RJ45 copper that's coming from my router. So I need to actually do some stuff with my Mellanox card, the 10 gigabit one. So we have to go to advanced network settings and then you'll see it right there, Mellanox Connect X3. And I didn't have to do anything other than plug in the card. Okay, there's a driver built right into Windows 11. So it's pretty cool. I didn't install anything. I think this driver is actually made by Mellanox, but it is or it has passed the Windows quality hardware check or whatever they call that. So <clears throat> click on the little drop down here and I'm going to go ahead and rename the adapter. Why not? I don't want it named Ethernet 2. You don't have to do that, but pretty neat. Now it says Mellanox 10 gigabit. So now I'm going to go to view additional properties. Okay, and by default, it'll be set up to do automatic DHCP assignment. If we were hooked into a fiber router, yeah, that'd probably work, but we're not. So I'm going to hit edit here and change it from automatic DHCP to manual. And I'm just going to use good old IPv4 because to me, those are a lot easier to type than these uh, IPv6 addresses. <clears throat> now you can pick whatever IP address you want, but I'm going to go with 192.168.1.11. And my regular LAN here at home has the 192.168.0 uh, first three um, octets. Okay? So... And then for my subnet mask, we'll just do the default. Really doesn't seem to have any effect on anything. 255.255.255.0. And then the gateway here, we're just going to go with 
192.168.1.10. And this is the IP address that I'm going to give to the 10 gigabit card that's installed in my Unraid. DNS doesn't even matter. Okay, because, oh, I guess it does matter. So let's put that in as a uh, the NAS okay there we go I know on the Unraid it doesn't matter if you have DNS in that card so there we go that was our settings we did manual IP assignment 192.168.1.11 is what we're going to use and the gateway I just set that to the um, the 10 gigabit card in the NAS and the same for the DNS. Let's go ahead and hop into Unraid. The first thing you need to do to make any networking changes is turn off your Docker service and your virtual machine service. So go into settings and first we're going to do the Docker. So click on Docker and then make sure enable Docker that Docker is not enabled. So say no and click apply. Now I've already disabled it so we don't have to do anything um, with that on my system. But then we'll go to settings again, and this time we'll go to VM manager and enable VMs. Again, if you come in here and it says yes, hit the drop down and hit no and hit apply. And in both cases, on Docker and on the VMs settings, you should see stopped. Now, once you get that stopped, go into settings one more time. And this time we're going to go to network settings. And here's my regular LAN connection. It's one gigabit per second. Okay. And I've given it a static IP and I did a static in my router and all that good happy stuff. And my DNS assignment, I have that set to automatic. So it's using my router here at home as the DNS. So I don't have to do anything with that. Um, <clears throat> the... Interface F1 is not plugged in because the server motherboard has two onboard NICs. So don't worry about that. And then you can see I've named my Mellanox card Mellanox. And, uh, oh, one thing to make sure to do is if you have bonding enabled, okay, if you have bonding enabled, um, you're going to have to take the... Um, you're going to have to take the Mellanox card out of the bonding, okay? Now, I don't have bonding enabled, but if I did, I'd have to make sure that F2 here was unchecked because we don't want these bonded, okay? doesn't do us any favors for a direct connection like that. Okay, so I've got my bonding turned off. I'll hit apply again, but it shouldn't change anything. because I didn't have bonding on to begin with. So when that gets done, we'll go back down to F2. Turn bonding off again, turn bridging off, okay? I'm going to do IPv4, and when you get in here, it'll be set to automatic, set it to static. And this is where I give it that same IP that I told Windows to use for the DNS and the gateway, okay? So there you go. We've got that. 192.168.1.10. Okay, and we don't really have to do anything uh, with that. You don't have to put a gateway. None of that stuff. Okay, we don't need that. And I'm going to put a zero in here to indicate no gateway for sure. All right. And then I also put a one right here for the default gateway because... Um, I wanted a uh, to make sure that this connection here was using this um, gateway because that is the proper gateway so that this NAS has a connection to the internet which it needs for uh, some of the plugins and stuff I have installed. Okay, so we've got that done. The next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is set up a host name that will force Windows to route all of our transfers, our file transfers and stuff, 
through our very fast 10 gigabit connection uh, whenever we're connected to that NAS, okay? And the way we're going to do that is use the IP um, of the Mellanox card that we set and attach a host name to it. Now, my shares are under, um, by default, under Skylab in, in SMB, but I'm going to make one called um, Skylab Fast. Okay, and to do that, to make a fake host name and tie it to an IP address manually, we're going to use what all operating systems have, and that's a host file. So in Windows 11, this is how I do it. There's other ways you can go about it. But I'm going to click on the Start menu and type CMD, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and hit Enter. And this will give me a um, command line that's got administrative privileges. Because in order to edit your host file, you have to have admin privileges. And I'm just going to do notepad, C, Windows, System32, Drivers, Etsy, Hosts. Okay, and that will let us edit the host file with admin privileges in notepad. Okay, so now we go down to the bottom of the host file. And I'm going to start with the IP address. That is the IP of our NAS, okay? And then we're going to um, give it a name, so I'll call it Skylab Fast. Skylab Fast. If you do it this way, it will for sure be routed through that fast 10 gigabit card. Because Windows can be kind of weird. Sometimes the routing will work fine, and sometimes it won't. I found this to be the most bulletproof way. So make sure to just save. Close this out. You can close the command prompt. All right, so let's test this out and see how fast it really goes. So I'll click on it here. And before I had the 10 gigabit set up, I was getting about 150 uh, megabytes a second, which um, translates to... Uh, a gigabit okay a gigabit connection will get you out about 150 megs a second it's not bad but if you're transferring big videos it's kind of slow so now let's go to the Skylab fast share and it's going to ask me for my credentials because we didn't have that host before so I'll type that in Okay, and now we're on Skylab Fast, and we can be assured that it's going to transfer this at the 10 gigabit, because as far as it's concerned, this is a totally different host. So I'll go into Video Projects, and I'll do, um, let's see, Archived, and we'll do the Mower Project, Media, Video, and I've got this one video in here that is 4 gigs. So I'll just click on it and we'll drag it over. And let's see the speeds we get. Okay, so we're getting 600 and uh, about 600 megabytes a second, give or take. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, shouldn't 10 gigabit be um, like, like 1,200 uh, megabytes a second? I think that's what it works out to. Well, the reason that this was, was only 600 megabytes a second is that um, the hard drives that this was being copied from in the NAS are just regular 10,000 RPM spinning drives, right? They are enter enterprise drives, but they're just spinning drives. So that is going to be slower than the full 10 gigabit. So now our bottleneck is going to be from the, uh, the hard drives themselves. They're just, they're slow. So We've got this big file here. Let us copy it to a fast NVMe that I also have in that NAS. And um, it's not in any storage pool or anything. I use the plugin Unassigned Devices. Here it is. This is an EXT4 partition that we have. And this is um, actually hosted on an NVMe drive that is in the, uh, the NAS. So let me make a new folder in here. So new folder and I'll call it upload test 
let's just do upload test like that go into it and now let's copy this file over and see if we can exceed 650 megabytes a second yeah it's not a whole lot because we're writing but um, you can see that you know it went pretty fast okay um, now let's read the file off of it so I'll delete this and I mean this is a 4.7 gigabyte file so now let's read it back off of this NVMe see what kind of speed we get okay so Windows is notorious for being really slow on the transfer but I'm pretty impressed with that because uh, we got not too far from the uh, the 1200 uh, megabytes a second or whatever so something like that okay so I would say that Windows 11 has improved the network stack for copying from um, SMB um, shares okay I really would because that seemed to me to be really solid I mean it was you know 900 megabytes a second so I think I got my money's worth out of uh, both the 10 gigabit upgrade and Windows 11 seems to have a better network stack whether or not that's true I don't know now let's talk about exactly what I bought and why and what the total cost of this project was so the first part was the 10 gigabit cards and uh, the Mellanox Connect X3 CX311A had fantastic reviews whenever I was looking into this I've actually messed with them now for a couple of years I did a little um, SFP plus to SFP plus connection between two machines at work so that used the SFP plus connection over copper that's limited as I said earlier I feel really confident recommending this card so on eBay they're $34.99 or $37 you know right around in there somewhere and they're incredibly common because a lot of enterprises used these cards starting in uh, you know somewhere like 2010 or, or 2011 something like that but now they're starting to upgrade to 100 gigabit <laughs> so they're getting rid of these cards and these recyclers go in and buy them up and resell them on eBay really cheap so two of those $69.98 and I got free shipping too it's easy enough to do um, <clears throat> now fs.com is where I got the uh, transceivers to convert SFP plus to fiber and apparently the official Mellanox adapter is an MFM 1T02A hyphen SR um, but the official transceivers are pretty expensive so I went with the FS.com and I did some research and they're, they seem to be legit they, they take these modules and put the custom firmware for Mellanox cards and it is compatible with uh, this card here it may be compatible with the other ConnectX cards I have no idea that really you know it's not something I can speak to also I made sure uh, what the connectors were so LC is the the connector type I'm pretty sure and uh, MMF is multi-mode fiber I don't know a whole lot about it but I know that that works and then the uh, fiber cable I got I made sure it had the LC ends on it and uh, it's LC to LC and UPF I don't remember what that uh, means honestly or I'm sorry I don't remember what UPC means but I know that as long as it's uh, LC and this is LC that it it worked just fine so uh, and then this OM4 is uh, the quality of the fiber cable I think something like that and I got a PVC jacketed one so I mean obviously you can't beat this fiber cable with a hammer but um, they've come a long way with how much you can bend that stuff 
So my total cost, lock, stock, and barrel, to get these super fast direct connections between this desktop and that server, and I could have went as far as 82 feet with a with a 25 meter uh, cable, but I think I only used about half of that. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, but my entire cost was $141.98. Okay. I'll put links to where I got all of this stuff in the description so you can go get the exact thing I got at least, you know, as best I can tell uh, through the links. If this was helpful to you, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It would help more people find the things that I do. And, uh, you know, I like making videos and it's good if people are actually watching the things you do and it makes you feel pretty good about it. So you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.